Check this out. I want to show you all how you can create a smooth spin transition in Vegas Pro without any plugins. All you need to do is get yourself the two clips and then you just want to trim them down and put them together. And for one time, the very one time we're actually going to use resample because it's going to play an important role in the spin and the motion effect. You want to go in the middle of both of them and scroll up with your mouse. If you don't have a mouse, then that's completely fine. You can just simply use the plus and the minus right at the bottom here. You want to use your left arrow key on your keyboard and then go back 14 keyframes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Once you get to the 14th one, press M to get yourself a mark point. Go back to the middle and same as last time, go 14 keyframes forward this time. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Once you go to the 14th one, press M on your keyboard. Go back to the first mark point. Make sure you select in your clip. Press S to split it up. Go to the second clip. Press S and split that one as well. You also want to make sure you have your magnet enabled and then your crossfade enabled because the next step is to drag your second clip into your first one and this is going to crossfade it and make sure you crossfade it on a four. Right click on here and set it to this one right here. But then you want to fill in that gap and to do that, you just drag the very last one, crossfade this one to six, right click on here and set it to a normal crossfade. If you wanted to, you can either leave the mark point there or you can move it over here as well. So we've done the first bit, we've done the crossfading. To add in the spin, we go all the way to the start, go into the event slash crop, and we're going to start off with the first thing, which is to leave the first keyframe where it is, go all the way to the end, left click on screen, zoom out a little bit more so you can see the edges, make sure that you have this one enabled, which is the sync cursor. Once you can see the edges, make sure you see the arrow, hold shift, and then left click and then drag this anti-clockwise to minus 105. You will see the angle right here. You can either drag it or you can type it in here. That works just the same. Go back to the first keyframe, right click on this one and set it to fast. Close this one down, go over to your second clip and do the same as last time. So at the event slash crop, go to the first keyframe. In here, we're going to move the first keyframe all the way to the end and we're going to left click on the screen, scroll out, hold shift, and this time rotate this one to 80 degrees, right about here. Make sure that you set this one too fast. And if we preview this really quick, you can see it fades from one to another and spins nice and smooth. Click on your first video. Once you're at the start of this, go into the event slash crop. You want to get yourself a mask. So click on this second keyframe, take the one that will say mask, this will enable it, get yourself the rectangle tool, and then you pretty much want to get yourself the image, but leave a little tiny gap between the border. So if you go to the feather type, set this one to in, and then set it to 12. Once you've set it to 12, you can left click off of it, close this one down, go to your second clip, and do the same for this one as well. Go on the mask, enable the mask, drag yourself the corner, and make sure you leave a little tiny gap. Now with this one, you wanna make sure you're selecting the keyframe on the mask and then go four keyframes forward. One, two, three, four. Move this one all the way to the fourth one, right there. And then same as last time, set this one to in and set this one to 12. Left click off of it, go back on the keyframe and this time go five keyframes forward. One, two, three, four, five. Now for this time, you just want to reduce the feather percentage to four. Left click off of this, right click on your keyframe, set it to slow, right click on your second one and set this one to slow as well. You can close this one down now. The reason why we've done that is because now what we can do is you can hold shift, left click on the second clip, hold control and then drag the first clip down and this will duplicate it. You want to open this up, make sure you untick the mask. We don't need the mask for the second clip. And you want to go on the first keyframe for the position, left click on the screen, scroll out a little bit more. Hold and shift, you want to drag the corners in by four. So one, two, three, four. And as you can see, it now has filled in those empty gaps. Go all the way to the last keyframe, select this one and do the same for this one as well. One, two, three, four. What you can do is you can go to the very last one 
and just drag the corners in a little bit more so you won't see any gaps whatsoever. And there we go. You then want to close this one down. You want to do the same for the second clip. Go into the event slash crop, go to your first keyframe, make sure that you untake the mask, click on your first keyframe position, left click on the screen, scroll out a little bit more, hold shift, drag the corners in four times. One, two, three, four. Go all the way to the end. One, two, three, four. We're gonna close this one down. You wanna go into the video effects tab. You wanna scroll all the way to the bottom and you'll find something called radial blur. Once you found it, you want to left click on your first clip, hold shift, click on your bottom right clip, drag the very last one onto here to apply it to all of them. But we need to, first of all, deselect all of them, close it down, click on the first one, go all the way to the start, go into the video effects, click on the stopwatch so it can start to animate this, change the type on Gaussian, set the strength to zero, left click off of this for it to apply, click on the timeline, and then go seven keyframes forward on this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Once you've got to the seventh one, go at the end of the strength and change this to 633. And then once again, left click off of it. You want to right click on the bottom one and on the round one, you want to change this one to a fast fade. Close this one down. Same applies for the bottom clip. So you just want to duplicate this. Video effects, go into the stopwatch, set this one on Gaussian, set it on zero, left click off of it, click on the timeline to select it, and then go seven keyframes forward. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Change this one to 633. Left click off of it to apply, go to the very first one, right click on the bottom one, set it to fast. But we need to also apply it to the second clips, but this time we're going to do the opposite effect. So they will start at a high number and then they will fall to zero. Back into the video effects, click on the stopwatch, go to the very first one. This time you want to go four keyframes forward. One, two, three, four. Once you go to the fourth one, drag this to there, set it on Gaussian, set this one to 633, left click off of it, Click on the timeline and go six keyframes forward this time. One, two, three, four, five, six. In here, we're going to set this one to zero. Left click off of it, and this will slowly start to decline. But you also want to right click on it and set it to a slow fade. We can close this one down, go to the second clip, do the same as last time. Click on the stopwatch for the animation. Go to the beginning, go four keyframes forward. One, two, three, four. Move the keyframe to there, set it on Gaussian, put this to 633, left click off of it, click on the timeline, and then go six keyframes forward, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then just simply put this to zero. Left click off of it, go back to this one, right click on here, and set it to a slow fade. And yeah, that's pretty much how you create a smooth spin transition.